So this is Calc AB. The lecture is section 2.6, related rates. <clears throat> this is another application of differentiating implicitly. But here we're not going to be differentiating with respect to x, but rather with respect to time. So the section starts with the volume formula for the volume of a cone. You would not be expected to remember this. Uh, it is given to you in any problem that you would need it. Uh, let's suppose that we have a cone and the radius of the cone and the height of the cone are both changing. So maybe the, maybe the cone is getting bigger around and shallower. You know, how does the volume change? So the, the radius has actually increased some and the height has decreased some at various rates. How does the volume change as the radius and the height change? So when you think about these things, you have to think that H is some function of time. As time goes, the height changes. And R is also some function of time, maybe some other function of time. So as time goes on, the radius changes. And the task is how does the volume change in turn? So this is our geometry equation. Uh, we're going to come up with what's called a rate equation using calculus. So the change in volume over time now, this is going to be the dvdt, the derivative of volume with respect to time. OK, so pi over 3 just comes straight down. That's the multiplicative constant. Then we have this product. And so we're going to have to take the derivative of a product. And the derivative of a product is the first, r cubed, times the derivative of the second. Now, because h is a function of time, we have to write the derivative of h with respect to t. Time is the independent variable here. First times derivative of the second, plus the second, which is h, times the derivative of the first. And again, r is a function of time, so the derivative of r squared is 2r dr dt. So this is now our geometry equation. And notice that. Uh, the rate of change of volume does depend on how quickly the height is changing and how quickly the radius is changing. Okay, so that's a rather complicated problem. Let's look at uh, a relatively easy one. I'm going to skip example one and go straight to example two. Uh, very typical problem. A uh, pebble drops in a pond and there's ripples that go out in circular, uh, circular geometry forms. Okay. And the, the question is, uh, how fast is the area increasing? So here's our geometry equation. The area of a circle is pi r squared. All of these start with the geometry type equation. Now, in this, we have to think that the radius is changing, changing over time. So there is a change in radius with respect to time. And likewise, the area is changing which sort of makes sense as the circle gets larger and larger, changing over time. So there is a derivative dA dt. And our task is to try to go from the geometry equation, the geometry equation to a rate equation dealing with calculus. So we just differentiate both sides with respect to time. So the derivative of a with respect to time, okay, pi is a constant multiple, that just comes straight down. And the derivative of r squared is 2r and then dr dt. Okay, so this is called our rate equation. The rate of change of area is related to the rate of change of radius. Okay, um, let's look at example two and see what particulars are involved with this problem. It does say uh, r, the radius r of the outer, outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. So dr dt is exactly one foot per second, which sort of makes sense, the units, feet, and seconds. Okay. Um, when the radius is four feet, so now they tell us the radius is four feet, uh, how fast 
or at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing? So our task is to find DADT given these two numbers. Well, this is just a plug and chug type of thing. DADT, when R is equal to four and DRDT, DRDT, DRDT is equal to one, will work out to be, okay, so we have pi, we have two, we have four feet. I'm going to go ahead and put the feet in just to emphasize something. And then we have one foot per second. Okay, so we multiply all these together. Uh, notice the units sort of make sense here at the end. We have uh, the D ADT, the change in area, with respect to time, is going to be uh, 8 pi, let's see, feet times feet is square feet per second, which certainly makes sense if you're talking change in area over time. So 8 pi square feet per second. Okay. Uh, let's look at example three. Uh, these are sort of fun problems. Um, this is a balloon. Air is being pumped into a spherical balloon. Uh, the rate is 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Let me just write that, 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Uh, I hope you could see this is now going to be a change in volume over time. right? So that's sort of a piece of information that's given, change in volume over time. Um, Find the rate of change of radius. Rate of change of radius would be change in radius over time. Don't know that. But we do know that the radius is equal to two feet. So that's all the stuff that's in the prompt. Uh, we need a geometry formula. Well, again, this would be given to you. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's from geometry. Here's the calculus equation. We take the derivative with respect to time, dv dt. Okay, 4 thirds pi, that's a constant. So we just bring that down. And the derivative of r cubed is 3r squared dr dt. And we put in all the information we know. We know dv dt was given as 4.5. Uh, we have 4 pi over 3 times three, well, these threes cancel very nicely. I'll just wipe that out. Um, we do have R squared. R was given as two feet, so two feet squared. And DRDT, we don't know. Okay, so DRDT is what we're looking for. Um, let me, on this 4.5 over here, let me write this as 4.5, and this is cubic feet per minute just to emphasize the units. Uh, notice that if we're trying to find DRDT, we have to divide both sides of this equation by, uh, let's see, four pi, and then two feet squared would be four feet squared. Right? Divide that and divide this by the same number. So four pi times four feet squared. Okay, and the reason I wanted to do this was just to look at the resulting units. So we have DRDT, and then on the left side, uh, the square feet goes out with the cubic feet, just leaving feet per minute. And the number is 4.5 over 16 pi. Okay, feet per minute, DRDT. So a pretty easy one to do. Um, speed of an airplane. Uh, we'll leave that there. Um, let's do a motion problem. These are in the exercises. Uh, I'm going to look at problems five and seven. So number five has a point is moving along the graph, and dx dt is two centimeters per second. Find dy dt. And the graph, the geometry equation, y is equal to 2x squared plus 1. You know, if we wanted to, we could graph that. It's a parabola. It's been shifted up one, so it's here. Uh, the vertex 
So it would be at zero one, and it's not regular x squared, it's two x squared. So it's rising a little bit more rapidly than normal parabola. And a point is moving along this parabola. Um, so here's our point, and it's moving along the parabola. Now, does it move left to right, or does it move right to left? Let's see, what do they tell us? For this particular problem, it does say dx dt is 2 centimeters per second. So that means x is getting bigger. So here's an x value. A second later, it's got to be 2 centimeters more. So in a second, it would move there. In another second, it would be 2 centimeters more. So it moves to there. In another second, it's 2 centimeters more. So it moves to there. In another second, it's 2 centimeters more. So it moves up here somewhere. Okay. So x is moving from left to right because the change in x with respect to time is a positive 2 centimeters per second. Okay. And our task is to find out what dy dt is, dy dt, and they do want us to find this when x is equal to negative 1, when x is equal to 0, and when x is equal to 1. Now, you can sort of suspect, again, just go back to the idea of the point moving along the curve. When x is at negative 1, it seems as though the point is dropping. So we would suspect that this dy dt would be negative for that one. Uh, when x is equal to 0, the point is at the vertex, and momentarily it's neither rising nor falling. So we would suspect that when x is 0, the y is not changing. So that might be 0. And as we go over where x is 1, it's pretty obvious the point is rising. So we would suspect that dy dt would be positive, so positive when x is equal to 1. Okay. So that's sort of our intuition. Let's go ahead and get the answers. Uh, this is our geometry equation. We need to go ahead and take the derivative implicitly with respect to time. So the derivative of y is dy dt. The derivative of 2x squared. Okay, so there's our constant multiple. 2. The derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt. Remember, we're differentiating with respect to time. And the derivative of the constant 1 is 0. So dy dt is going to be 4x dx dt. And now we can answer these questions. Uh, we know that dx dt is given to be 2. So we can plug that in everywhere we need it. And uh, dy dt, depending on the x value, is going to be various things. OK, so let's go ahead and turn these out. Again, dx dt was given to be 2. Remember, that was, that was given in the problem. So right there, we're going to be putting 2. So dy dt evaluated at x is equal to negative 1. It's going to be 4 times negative 1 times 2, negative 8 centimeters per second, which is sort of what we suspected, right? So the particle would be dropping, be dropping 8 centimeters every second at that moment. When x is equal to 0, we just, again, go into here, and x is equal to 0. This is going to be 4 times 0 times 2, which is 0 centimeters per second. So momentarily, the particle is not rising nor falling. It's rather just moving horizontally. You can imagine a horizontal tangent line right there when x is 0. And when x is equal to 1, just chug a 1 in here. So 4 times 1, so 8 centimeters per second. Pretty easy problem. Let's try number seven. Uh, again, it's fun just to do a trick problem every once in a while. Uh, number seven, we have y is the tangent of x. Okay, so we know what that looks like. The tangent function has these uh, asymptotes, right? Pi over two and negative pi over two. And the branch looks something like this. It comes up crosses the origin and goes like that. And then that is periodic. It repeats, right? Every pi is the period. So there would be another uh, vertical asymptote here at 3 pi over 2 with another branch 
looking like this, crossing at pi and then going back up. Okay, so there's your graph of the tangent. Um, okay, let me pause this just for a second. Okay, we're back and we're trying to find dy dt. Um, again, it tells us that for this problem, just like the previous problem, the x dt is given as 2 centimeters per second, and our task is to find dy dt at various times when x is equal to negative pi over 3. x is negative pi over 3. Uh, also, x is equal to negative pi over 4, and x is equal to 0. Okay, so again, let me put a, a dot over here on our graph. It looks like we're on this, this branch that goes through the origin. And so the point is moving along this branch of the curve. It never jumps over to the other branch. And what do we know? We know that x is getting larger and larger, 2 centimeters every second. So you have to think of the x coordinate is getting larger, which I mean if you think about it, if you're over here and the x coordinate is getting larger, the point has to be rising along the curve. Uh, if I were falling along the curve, the x coordinate would be getting smaller. Okay, so we would suspect that all of these would be some positive, positive quantity. Okay, so uh, let's see get the point out of the way. This is negative pi over 2 right here. So negative pi over 3 is right about there, and negative pi over 4 is right there, and obviously x is 0 is right there. Okay, so we have to find how quickly y is changing at those three uh, x positions. Well, to do that, we need a rate equation. So here's our geometry equation, y is tangent of x, and here's our a derivative equation we're going to differentiate with respect to time because both y and x is changing over time. Okay, so the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Secant squared, leave the angle alone, but then multiply this times the change in the angle. Okay, again, we're differentiating for all these rate problems, you're differentiating with respect to time, not with respect to x. Okay, so then you plug in all the numbers that you know. So I can do that. Let me take away this branch. Don't need that. And okay, so dy dt. This is evaluated when x is negative pi over 3. We're going to have the secant of pi over 3. We're going to have to figure out what that is. We have to square it, and then we're going to multiply it times dx dt, which was given as 2 uh, units, or again, centimeters per second. Okay, um, and likewise, if we wanted to do this derivative of y with respect to t, evaluated when x is negative pi over 4, uh, we're going to get the secant of pi over 4, and we have to square that times 2 centimeters per second. And lastly, when we uh, evaluate this when x is 0, so dy dx, or sorry, dy dt, when x is equal to 0, it's going to be the secant of 0 squared times 2 centimeters per second. So all these answers really uh, require us to know what the secant of an angle is. So a little unit circle wouldn't be a bad idea. And so here's our unit circle. Uh, pi over 3 is the 60 degree angle. The ordered pair is 1 half, the square root of 3 over 2. Remember, this is the cosine of pi over 3, and the secant is the reciprocal, so the secant of pi over 3 is 2. So for this one right here, we're going to put the number 2. Uh, we have to square that as 4. 4 times 4 is 8 centimeters per second. Okay. Secant of pi over 4. Again, draw your circle. Pi over 4 is the 45 degree angle. Okay, and the ordered pair is square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. This is the cosine of pi over 4, and the secant of pi over 4 is the reciprocal. So 2 over the square root of 2, we're going to put that right here. 
but we have to square that, so that's 4 over 2, 4 over 2, which is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so 4 would be the answer to that 4 centimeters per second. And the last one, uh, now we're going to figure out what happens when x is 0. Again, draw a little unit circle. Uh, hopefully these numbers would come. You don't have to draw it each time. Uh, this is the 0 0.10. This is the cosine of 0. The secant of 0 is the reciprocal, which is 1. That's going to go here. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, so that's problems 5 and 7. Um, I would like you to try... Um, try a 13, um, 17, and 25. So 13, 17, and 25. Try those tonight. We'll talk about these tomorrow. So 13, 17, and 25. Okay, let me go ahead and stop this here.